So the big announcement of the $25,000 home builder package, it's going to cost the government $688 million over the next six months. There was some mixed reaction, though, wasn't there? Some people saying that the minimum amount of spending is too high. Yeah, look, I mean, these schemes are just so hard to get right. I think, um, you know, on one hand, what, what it is trying to do is to generate employment. And, and it does, you know, if we have a look at what it will do to people in trades, it will lead to greater levels of activity. Uh, it's also trying to avoid people uh, affordability issues. You know, if you, if you give people just more money to buy homes, it does push up pricing. And given how unaffordable housing is, is in Australia, it's, you know, that's not something we want to do. Uh, there's lots of, there has been a lot of criticisms. I guess um, the, some of the, the main ones have been uh, in Sydney in particular. The price points um, do exclude a lot of places, which is uh, quite problematic. There was an article today in the Daily Telegraph from Maiden Divine which went through the suburbs which would benefit, and there was quite a short list. Uh, and then also the short time frame. So, you know, there will be quite a rush of activity. Uh, and then that the, prop, the, the grant doesn't apply to rental housing, only to owner-occupied housing. So the renters um, obviously aren't eligible, but investors aren't eligible either. So uh, there won't be any improvement of stock in rental housing. There also won't be any increase in, in rental housing availability. And you, Nerida, have been writing about what first home buyers should well, like most of all. What, what's been the verdict there? Yeah, look, first time buyer activity has been interesting. And again, this grant does help them. Um, we, ha we have seen this enormous level of activity, inquiry levels um, from first home buyers on realestate.com.au. So uh, it's quite fascinating. In Canberra, um, the level of first home buyer inquiry has actually tripled from in May 2020 compared to May 2019. Uh, but it, pretty much everywhere, we've seen this, this quite disti distinct lift in, in the level of activity. So first home buyers do like this market. They like a slow moving market. Obviously unemployment's a problem, but there are some very generous grants available to them. Uh, they, they also don't like investors in the market. So investors are very inactive at the moment. We've seen a drop off in, in activity compared to, to May last year. Um, and, um, and this package really doesn't help to get them back, which is um, a little bit problematic, particularly for, the, for, for some parts of the new development sector, particularly apartment developers. And what about low stock volumes hitting commercial as well as residential? Yes, we have seen a big drop off in listings uh, for residential. It has been pretty well documented now that people are looking to buy and you know, we've got these very high levels of buyer activity, but there's really not much to, to buy out there if sellers aren't, aren't particularly confident. Uh, it seems to be very similar in commercial. We've, we've had a look this week at the number of commercial properties on market and um, it, it's Good news in one way that we've seen this drop off in activity. It does show that we haven't got a high level of distress in the market. If we, if we were seeing distress and people just wanting to get out because they needed to pay down debt or, or whatever, uh, it would, we would potentially see quite a significant uplift. But it does seem that a lot of property uh, holders of commercial, or people that own commercial property are just staying put, they're watching the market, they're trying to deal with these um, issues around tenancy and higher vacancy and lower rent. Uh, it may, we may see some fallout going forward, but for now it looks pretty stable and, um, and, and you know, overwhelmingly that is good news. And the overseas search again looking for, or looking more positive with Singapore leading the charge. Yeah, it is interesting. I mean, overseas search is, has been a problem for off-the-plan developers for quite some time now. We have seen very little activity coming out of China. I think some of the um, announcements from the Chinese government this week will, will make it even worse that, you know, we, we have got an issue with um, Chinese that they were big buyers of uh, residential apartments in Australia. They were, uh, there was a lot of students that were coming here. Uh, but we, you know, we may not see that same level going forward. Uh, Singapore, though, we, we are seeing a lot of activity coming out of Singapore at the moment. So it may be a little bit to do with the announcements of the Australia-Singapore travel bubble. Uh, there, there potentially is some quite, um, you know, we, we may see movement between the two countries sooner than, than other parts of the world. But it is hitting not just residential property, also commercial property. So a lot of um, searches coming out of Singapore looking particularly at industrial property in Australia.